The summary is that I treat cuboid fractures like a very small tibial plateau injury. Elevate the joint surface, distract the opposing bone, reduce the joint surface, pack bone graft under it, and put a buttress plate on. Part two is that the distal articular surface is far more important than the proximal one. The proximal articular surface with the calcaneus is very tolerant. It, it tolerates some impaction, it tolerates some displacement, and it doesn't seem to bother patients very much. But it can't be unstable. It can be a little bit impacted, but it can't be unstable. So that's the whole talk. And just to reiterate the principles that we talked about yesterday, you treat mobile joints in the foot as if they're any other intraarticular fracture, anatomic reduction, rigid internal fixation, but the joints that aren't mobile, you don't have to worry so much about anatomic reduction, just make sure they're lined up. So the distal articular surface requires mobility with the fourth and fifth metatarsals. It requires anatomic reduction. The proximal doesn't require more than a little bit of shuffling, and it's very tolerant, and you just have to make sure it's lined up. So anatomic ORAF, we just talked about. A reminder that this is how the foot functions, heel strike, no weight on the midfoot, and then weight on the, on the metatarsals. So there's a lot of bending at the fourth and fifth metatarsal junction with the cuboid, but not a lot of motion at the cuboid calcaneus. So I approach these fractures in line with the fourth metatarsal. I've made the mistake when I was younger of making a lateral incision right on the foot and finding the sural nerve in the way, the perineal tendons in the way, and the fifth metatarsal in the way. So make that incision a little bit higher along the fourth metatarsal, and it's easier to see. Elevate the distal articular surface or proximal. Place bone graft, buttress plate, just like any other intraarticular fracture. And just a quick reminder that injuries of the columns, the lateral and the medial column, affect the whole shape of the foot. So if it's allowed to shorten by impaction, the foot will become abducted, and you may end up overloading the fifth metatarsal. So that's the medial column. Here's the lateral column. Look at the shape of the cuboid. It's really not cuboidal. It's far more complicated than that. But you have this one nice flat surface on which to put a plate, and that's usually the best place to put it anyway because the force of action is these metatarsals crushing it, and so this is the place you want to buttress most of the time anyway. These are some pictures of the bone. You can see how truly complicated the other surfaces are. Not very easy to put a plate there. And there's a lot of variation in the shape of the cuboid. We looked at some of these images yesterday. Neutral foot, cuboid, and a, a cavus foot. They have different shapes. And a flat foot, again, is a much more elongated bone. So when do I fix them? If the distal articular surface is impacted, if the fifth metatarsal is subluxed or unstable, and generally because the perineus brevis attaches, it migrates proximally and plantarly, and then they walk on it and they're very uncomfortable. So if the fifth metatarsal is mobile, or if it's subluxed, you need to fix these. If part of the greater midfoot injury requires fixation, I'll do that too. So there's a navicular dislocation and a cuboid fracture that may increase the likelihood that the cuboid needs to be fixed. So how I fix it, I approach it in line with the fourth metatarsal. I move the extensor brevis, I elevate the articular surface, place bone graft and a buttress plate, and sometimes pin the metatarsals. This is the exposure that you can get. If you see on this image, if you draw a line right in along with the fourth metatarsal, it comes right across the middle of the cuboid. So don't be tricked by the position of the fifth. You want to be in line with the fourth metatarsal when you make this incision. It's really very similar to incision you'd make for the, for the talus. So here's the line right along the fourth, and it ends up toward the front of the fibula. So that's your line of axis, fourth metatarsal to the fibula. They're not commonly isolated injuries. It doesn't have, the calcaneal cuboid joint doesn't have a lot of motion, so that one can be bridged or fused. But the fourth and fifth, the distal joint, that needs to be anatomic. So this is a diagram from an old, old paper. It's crushed sometimes from both sides. You disimpact it, fill it with bone graft, and place a buttress plate. There are a large number of fancy new plates out there that are actually quite helpful. I try not to use those expensive plates, but this one is it's very nice because you can buttress at the top and at the bottom, at the proximal and at the distal end. 
And on this diagram, you can see that the extensor brevis is frequently in your way. You can just detach it proximally and migrate it, la migrate it medially to get in. So here's kind of a standard cuboid fracture with proximal migration of the fifth. You can see on the lateral view that there's overlap of the fifth, so you know it's impacted at least five to ten centimeter, five to ten millimeters. The CT shows the impaction on both views, and you can see how the fifth metatarsal is migrating proximally and plantarly. That's usually the direction it goes. This is after disimpaction, bone grafting, and buttress plate, and skewering, because sometimes these remain a little bit unstable at the end, and you can temporarily K-wire those for four to six weeks and uh, pull them out so they don't sublux. This is what it looks like at healing, relatively normal alignment, relatively well-maintained joint space. On the proximal end, you have a little bit more in the way of options. This is a crush of the proximal end, and Andy, I think this might be a case left over from when you were a fellow. You can see that it's really crushed on the inside, not so much on the outside. These can just be reduced, held with a K-wire, and bridged, and you can take this bridge plate off at 12 to 16 weeks. Thank you.